She invited in a demon, which then invited the legion in of that demon. I can't see to look away. Hello everybody, welcome. I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. I'm a psychic medium who specializes in the paranormal, an astral traveler, an artist, and one of the hosts to the Lights of Midnight podcast. Yay! So if you're new, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about traumas. Now, if you see me looking up and down, it's because I'm reading my notes because I don't want to mess this up because I have a tendency to like say a lot of F-bombs, which may dilute the message that I'm trying to provide and I don't want to do that. So (laughs) I thought, you know what? Screw it, I'm just gonna read my notes. I spent hours writing this, these notes and my guides helped me do this. But I wanna touch on trauma in relation to spirituality and negative attachments because this is not talked enough about. So yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about this and give people insight of why it's important to understand your traumas and heal your traumas and so on and so forth. Because actually, when you do those things and you heal your traumas, it's actually more beneficial to you, right? Okay, so first things first. So I'm gonna be talking about traumas in relation to spirituality and negative attachments. So, you know, there's a bunch of influencers. I mean, if you're in this community, you already know who some of them are, right? And they have their own perspective and which is fine. Everyone has their own, you know, opinion and perspective of things. And I'm here to relay my interpretation from what I've learned from my guides, um, personal experiences through helping clients, dealing with negative entities, my own attachments, and my own healing journey. So this is just like a collective lesson that I've learned through those experiences. So let's start off with what trauma is. (laughs) So typically it can be any negative situation that distresses, disturbs, shocks, and or hurts a person mentally, physically, or spiritually. And you know, I'm throwing emotionally in with the mentally part, so yeah. It can happen in a single incident, multiple occurring events, or varied and multiple events. So common signs of trauma. We have experiencing anxiety, depression, avoidant behavior, feelings of shame or guilt, addiction and eating disorders, sleep issues, detachment, suicidal thoughts and self-harm, anger, intense fear, or hypervigilance, among other things, right? The list goes on and on. Um, Whether you are a part of the spiritual community or not, it is very important for a person to get to know themselves and understand how they work as an individual or a whole. Know the things that trigger you and why. Identify your thought patterns. Understand why you do the things that you do. Identify your thinking voice, right? A lot of people kind of think in their own voice in their head. Now, you know, there's some rare exceptions where people don't hear their thinking voice, which there's a term for that, but I can't remember what it is, so I'm sorry. But yeah, etc. If you do this, it will make it easier to identify potential traumas, and if you can't, talking to a medical professional will surely help. I also want to note that there can be a negative stigma when it comes to therapy, depending on the area you live in, the religion you're part of, family, friends, etc. But I'm here to tell you that it's your choice to make and it's not anybody else's or their business, right? So, at the end of the day, it is you who has to live with yourself, okay? And the consequence and the person you are. Not to mention if you were stuck being alone due to unfortunate accident, all you would have is yourself, right? Lastly, 
those who care about you should want the best for you and want you to grow into a better version of yourself. If you don't have anyone like that in your life, it is time to take a step back and analyze those who you've been hanging around. It might be time to set stricter boundaries for yourself or cut ties, especially if all they are are negative influences, enablers, energy vampires, or just toxic to your well-being. Oh, and obviously, what you do is your business, like I said, not anyone else's, right? It's you. It's yourself that you have to take it care of. No one else, usually, is going to do that for you. So, some ways to help heal yourself from traumas, and this is like a, just a general list here. Um, there's plenty more, but acknowledge the event of the trauma or acknowledge the trauma in the first place. Therapy, so you can do cognitive behavioral therapy. There's cognitive processing therapy and prolonged exposure therapies. There's a bunch of other therapies, but that's just the gist of the therapies. Meditation, set boundaries, find support. So like finding someone to speak to that you trust, that is key. Research, researching you know, things that you can do for yourself that might work. Sometimes, you know, health professionals stick to like their guidelines and not everything works for everyone the same, right? Sometimes you have to take matters into your own hand or own hands and find ways that might help you, right? Then um, pick up a fun hobby. So like, for example, if you're doing a toxic behavior, or you're trying to set your mind on something else that's more positive, picking up a hobby can help you. Avoid addictions and addictive substances or things, very important. Focus on physical health, such as diet and exercise. Get into a routine, and sometimes people find help through religion, and or it's kind of like a comfort kind of thing. Religion can help people. I. Sometimes I say things about Christianity, but you know what? Christianity and other religions, Catholicism has helped people. So religion can help people one way or another. And just like all things, there's pros and cons to everything. So journaling, etc. Right? Okay. So I just wanted to get the basics out of the way. In the spiritual community, there are certain influencers with their own beliefs when it comes to traumas. For example, I'm going to list a bunch of examples and what I feel is not quite right about it. But again, my perspective, my interpretation, okay, so you can agree or disagree. That is up to you, okay? So yeah, these are just a few examples of the most common things that I've seen or have experienced myself. So. Here's one, everyone knows Teal Swan. This is her thing and she's got a massive following. She's got millions of followers, okay? So what I'm about to read to you is important. <laughs> Demonic spirits are parasitic entities that are drawn to a person's trauma because the entity itself is seen as something that is lacking as well that creates a symbiotic relationship with the host that the entity is just a shadow aspect of yourself and if you accept it and your trauma and welcome it by showing it love, it will pop off and no longer be a problem. Plus she says suicide is a reset button. Okay, let's unpack that. And you know, if you've ever watched my um, live video, which is still up, so I'll put it somewhere here but you can watch that and I pretty much talk about like Teal Swan as a whole and what I find not good about some of the things she says. All right, so first of all, this is very problematic for several reasons. Demonic entities are not part of the shadow self, okay? They are their own entity, okay? They don't care whether or not you love them or not makes no difference. Um, accepting and welcoming, welcoming a demon into yourself promotes 
demonic attack and possession, and you don't want to do that. Trust me. Okay, so here's the thing with doing something like that, inviting a demon in and or selling your soul, okay? I just had a client, hi, <laughs> who, you know, as a teenager, a young teenager, did things that she regretted. Understandable, we all make mistakes. And, you know, she was in a very, um, I should say, she was in a very devastating point in her life where she thought she had no choice but to sell her soul, okay? And it's really sad. But by doing so and welcoming the demon, she invited unknowingly, again, like I said, she didn't understand the consequences, okay? She invited in a demon, which then invited the legion in of that demon, which when I was doing the meditation for her um, yesterday, actually, I saw a horde of demons. I drew like five of them, but there were so many. And when you have a demon problem, chances are you're going to have a multiple of demon problems because you're not just getting one demon, but you're getting their legion and or leader that they rule under or rule over. So that's a problem. And possession obviously can lead to traumatic events and situations that you don't want to be a part of. Okay? Okay. Um, demons aren't capable of love. They lack that they lack love so if you you know try to welcome them in by loving them and stuff if anything it's just gonna make the problem worse because it's actually inviting them and giving them permission to continue the attachment and or attacks or hauntings right so when you do that that's a problem and you're just giving them permission to continuously haunt you um, there's a difference between showing them love versus respect. And by respect, I mean not taunting them and calling them names and stuff. It's more of an understanding of what they're capable of. And yeah. So when I say like respect entities, I don't mean like love them. It's just understand what they're capable of and don't like poke a sleeping bear, if you will, that will make issues worse. Okay? Okay. So, yeah. And demons can still haunt a person without traumas. Surprise! They can. They don't care, like, where you come from, who you are, what race, ethnicity, gender. They don't give a shit. They just, if they see that there's an opening for them to haunt you and bother you and attack you, they're gonna take it. Sometimes it's not always traumas that they see that they just, you know, take that opening. Sometimes you invite them in unknowingly or, you know, there's other circumstances, right? But yeah, that's, but the whole point of the, vi the video here is to talk about traumas, okay? But I'm just saying that it's not always a person's trauma that can create that opening for them to come in but anyway and the shadow self is just the subconscious that has yet to be healed so it's not a demon okay not a demon not a demon my friends not a demon and then obviously the whole suicide thing where she says that suicide is like a reset button <sighs> no just flat out, no. Suicide prevents the soul from growing via learning lessons, but also killing yourself or selling your soul is dangerous because you as the in individual um, will not come back through that same consciousness and or identity. You'll exist on the astral realm and then, you know, the branch of the next reincarnation will then become the new consciousness and I'll explain the whole soul thing at the end of this video because it's complicated and I don't even know if I'm gonna explain it perfectly but I'll try my best 
All right, so the second thing when it comes to trauma, we have the toxic positivity movement. And I feel like a lot of people in this um, space, if you will, understand and know somebody or has had this happen to them where they pretty much just say, oh, it's your fault that, you know, you're being haunted by negative entities because you're not positive enough and or, you know, you're just attracting it through the law of attraction, which is bullcrap, okay? People don't, there's one thing if you're like, okay, I want this thing to happen and you work on manifesting it, right? But, like, a lot of people don't want traumas or, you know, severe situations or violence and stuff to happen to them. Who the hell would, right? But so, yeah, pretty much with this idea, it's saying that negative events that happen in one's life is because you attracted it through your negative mindset and vibration, a.k.a. the law of attraction, okay? The law of attraction is more complicated than that. Um, this train of thought is very detrimental to the victim who has suffered any type of trauma, especially any violent traumas, like I said. Um, psychology 101, right? They teach you, do not blame the victim, because if you blame the victim, it's only going to hurt their mental health even more. Psychology minor here, right? You don't do that. The law of attraction is more complex, like I said, than just being like um, negative vibration and mentality attracting it, right? Attracting a certain outcome. And there are many variables at play or that are at play when it comes to this law. But like one main example is the law of free will. I'm fairly certain, like I said, that victims don't choose or agree to have bad things happen to them. Plus, you have other laws that are also coming into play simultaneously, okay? I'm not going to go through each of the laws. You can Google them, all right? That's a separate video. It'll take a long-ass time. But yeah. And then, and then, you have people that are like, oh, it's past life karma. You must have done something really bad in your past life. All right. I'll get into the nitty gritty with that. And it has to do with the soul thing I'm going to talk about at the end. And I'm going to draw it on my paper to explain it because, yeah, it's hard to explain without drawing diagrams and stuff. But people with this ideology, they're just like, yeah, it's because you did something bad in your past life. And, you know, it's in this lifetime you're making up for that. All right. While I do believe in karma personally, I think it's more complicated than that. To me, it makes no sense how a past life's choices would affect a current life when the consciousness and identity is not the same. It's it's not exactly the same person, right? Now, it makes sense where let's say in your current life you do something bad like, I don't know, you murder somebody, right? Well, in this same life it would make sense that you would get arrested. It's, it's like a cause and effect kind of thing, right? Now, traumas and things can carry over into next lives if you do not um, pretty much solve them in the life you were supposed to. And it is kind of complicated, but like, Things that you might, and I'm just giving an example here, things that might not make sense as to, like, for example, let's say you're afraid of water and you don't know why. You never had an experience or a negative experience with water that you know of to create that irrational fear, right? Well, maybe you had one in a past life that carried over and then you got to learn that lesson then that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> moving on. But it's more so about like past life things and lessons are carried over, like I said, when they're not learned in the previous life. And it's kind of like in your mind or physical body. 
So, if that makes sense. It's not like more of a situation that happens to you. Hopefully. Okay. I hope, I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. But, okay. So, I do believe in soul lesson plans. And this kind of like stems off of what I just said. And spiritual contracts that are made for spiritual growth. I feel as though in this contract... You and your spirit team figure out various lessons, but after that, several laws and other variables, it partially steers the direction your life takes, and then you add the whole freedom to make your own choices, aka the law of free will, and then... But so it's kind of like you choose your choices, right? And then outcomes then play from that. Hopefully, you know, that makes sense. But it's like, it's not predestined for somebody to become essayed or violently attacked. There are lessons in motion that one has to learn, but how they get to that lesson is not necessarily preplanned. Okay? So if someone has to learn about abuse, unfortunately... That doesn't necessarily mean they have to experience the abuse firsthand, like, through becoming um, a victim of, like, domestic abuse or whatever. There are other ways to learn about that specific lesson than having it done to you. It's just one of those unfortunate things that may occur. But like I said, it's like you're given these things that you need to learn. And through the decisions you make and the consequences, in addition to other laws that come into play, kind of like steer where you go and how you learn them. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. It's like I I know what I need to say, but sometimes my delivery is a little off. Okay, sorry. But all right, so... From what I've experienced, I've learned a whole lot about traumas and their effects on the soul and negative spirits. It should be noted that unresolved or unhealed traumas can play on mental, physical, and spiritual health. And when one or more of these things occur, it takes a toll on the person's psychic defenses. For example, chakras and auras have a direct effect on one another. So when one is unbalanced, the other is directly affected. With that being said, any sort of trauma, whether it is mind, body, or spirit, can weaken these bodily energy systems, which in turn weakens your spiritual and or psychic defenses. When spiritual and psychic defenses are weakened, It makes it easier for negative entities to become attached. They find a hole in your armor and make sure to take that opportunity. At the same time, not everyone with traumas will have or gain an attachment. There are other factors to take into consideration, such as whether a person knowingly or unknowingly invited the negative entity in. If they are a type of psychic being, whether that's a psychic medium or psychic empath, or just have a natural bright light within them, there are other ways to attract negative entities. But again, we're not, we're not going to go into that. I have a video we can put somewhere that I'll link here if you want to go watch that. One of the most important lessons I've learned when helping clients, especially clients with negative attachments, is I was finding I could help cleanse a space and the person, but sometimes the entity would come back. I had to learn why that was. Sometimes you just get stubborn entities that just, you know, come back to wreak havoc because they can. I had to understand how some of these entities were able to maintain a grip on the client and how they were able to come back. These entities were able to use the client's traumas against them first and foremost. If you don't fix the hole in the defenses, they will be able to continuously keep coming back. My guides gave me the perfect analogy. You can use peppermint spray around your home to keep the mice away, but if you have a crack in your wall outside, 
the mouse will still get in after the peppermint spray wears off. You can sage, use Palo Santo in the inside of the space, even have an exorcism or deliverance on the body, but if the mode of entrance is still there, there's a possibility for the entity to come back when those things wear off, okay? The second most important lesson I've learned is that these negative entities use a person's traumas as a stronghold. They like to rub salt or sometimes or some cases acid into the wound why more negative energy equals food we know that a lot of negative entities feed on negative energy so they're going to do things that produce negative energy so enhances and furthers their end game depending on the entity depends on the end goal but if you have a demon or devil entity their end goal could be possession or death so they will push you to your limits and make you as hopeless as possible to either have you willingly let them in for control and other nefarious purposes or for you to give up and take the suicide route. There are some entities that want you to remain alive to become a continuous food or entertainment source. They too will poke and prod at your traumas to make you miserable enough to become an everlasting food source. Many malicious entities have a pattern of attack. Of course, not all entities attack the same and not all patterns are the same, but this is something I've noticed over time okay but like i said not all demons or negative entities attack the same sometimes their techniques or strategies are different but i've noticed many like to use more physical modes of attack first during the oppression phase when they tend to try to get the victim's attention in any way that they can to scare them such as poltergeist like activity or moving things around Making sounds, scratches, burning, bruising the victims, nightmares manifesting physically and energetically attacking and so forth. When they are close to being kicked out or enter the phase of influence, that's when the mental games increase. So they may be playing mental games already, but the mental games will increase at some point. They enter your thoughts to pretend to be your thinking voice. They start weaving any guilt or traumas more so like a spider in the midst of capturing their prey because they know once they trap you in that sticky web, it's harder for you to break free. They start setting you up for specific thinking patterns. A person who is unaware of how they think and just overall unaware of themselves can easily be caught by this maneuver and mentally spin out of control. Reality starts to become blurry and eventually you can't tell the f between fact or fiction day or from night. Your mind becomes so warped that you begin to listen to the more heinous suggestions the entity is feeding you until you wind up possessed and acting on impulse that leads to a tragic event or just plain death. It's very similar or the idea of how like, you know how priests, especially, um, I believe it's Catholic priests, they do this even before um, they go into an exorcism, they go to confession. So this is kind of a similar idea but if they confess their sins, wrongdoings, etc., it is harder for the negative entity to use those things against them because in the priest's eyes, they have already been forgiven for it by, you know, God or Christ, if you will, right? So they can't use their guilt or traumas against them for the most part. So when I tell people trauma is a big part of why their attachment isn't leaving. These are the reasons why. Some people like to manipulate my words and say it's because of their traumas that they have attachments, making it like it's their fault. That's not the case. That's not what I'm trying to say. People can't control their traumas any more than they can control whether or not an entity attaches to them. Of course, you have people that do misguided things that can't 
that can attract negative entities, but most of the time it's because they were uneducated of the consequences of a particular action, not because they wanted the attachment in the first place. And obviously I'm not counting the misguided people who purposely do rituals to have their favorite malevolent entity by their side. <coughs> Demonologists, uh, anyway. And even some dark magic practitioners. And then fourth, last but not least, healing and working on traumas aids in spiritual growth. The whole point of reincarnation or reincarnating onto earth is to learn lessons to help grow our soul. Earth is really just a school for learning. Even if a situation that is unplanned and leads to a trauma, obviously that's horrible that a person has to suffer, you know, obviously. But it's through suffering and shitty circumstances that we learn from the situation. Without knowing the dark, you can't know the light. And if you can heal that trauma and learn from it, it will make you stronger in the end and overall. So let this be a lesson. You are entitled to your own beliefs and that's fine. If you don't believe in spirits or negative entities, cool. You do you. I'm not here to convince anybody. This video is more for those who already believe negative entities and that attachments exist, okay? But at the end of the day, the most important thing is your well-being and being the best and healthiest version of yourself, whether that's mentally and or physically. It will give you a better opportunity to live a happy and fulfilling life. Whew, that was a lot. Okay, so let's, if you want to know about the whole soul thing, here we go. <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk about the whole soul thing, like I promised. So, sorry if it's hard to see. Maybe I'll brighten up the light here. So, you see this big soul here? That's your higher self, right? Now, time is not linear, and it's happening all at once, once you leave this earth plane, right? So once you leave the earth plane, everything's going on at the same time. So you have your past lives. So you have one, these are just examples here, right? Let's say in this example, we have three past lives and even your current life and your future self. They all have their own consciousness. They have their own identity. They have their own lesson plans that they gotta learn and Eventually, when those lives are done, they are integrated into your higher self, which is your soul, your main soul. And this is not saying that you have multiple souls. No, these are just fractions or like shards or pieces of your soul, okay? So when you get the argument, well, I have this piece of my soul, I can sell it, or if I commit suicide, I can have a restart button. No, because each piece, each life, and each life is individual. Each life is its own person, its own consciousness, has its own identity. So, for example, if you, you know, cut your life short, whether that's through suicide or you sell your soul when you do that you're selling your identity in this consciousness right why do you think that you can communicate with your past lives now one may argue that it has to do with the akashic records kind of but you know those each life has its own consciousness that you can communicate with Akashic records are just records of things that have happened in the past, but your past life has its own consciousness. That's why a lot, or I shouldn't say a lot, but many times your past life can become a guide or a spirit guide. It's because they have their own consciousness or you can be a reincarnation of a, of a past relative. That past relative was its own person, its own consciousness. And when they died, 
all the lessons that they learn then integrate into the higher self or the main big soul. Okay, Does that, I hope that makes sense. So that's why it's not good to do things that could harm your individual self and identity and whatnot. So yeah, selling your soul, bad idea. Because you're still going to have to go through those consequences of doing so. So that could be torture, um, being in hell, being tortured in hell, um, not learning those lessons, which again hurts your higher self and your soul, um, so on and so forth, right? And when you commit suicide and you cut that life short, well, guess what? Um, you That consciousness, that identity, that being, even though technically it's part of the same same whole, still has its own identity, that identity, that consciousness does not come back to earth. No, it actually, what happens is it gets reincarnated into a new consciousness that then goes through the lessons. And you screw yourself out of you know, earth and learning and what it means to be human. So that's why you don't want to do that. This is very, <laughs> this is very complicated. Another example is like any anime fans, right? Do we have anime fans? I know, I know we do. If I'm an anime, if, if I'm into anime, I'm sure other people are, okay? And I'm 30, okay? But so here's an example. We have Naruto, Remember when he does his training with Kakashi Sensei and he does his multiple clones, his 50 clones or whatever, and they each have different things that they have to do and learn. And then when they poof and disappear, all that knowledge that he gained from all of those clones integrates into the whole, into the main being. So hopefully that makes sense. It's the best analogy ever. <laughs> I love that analogy. But yeah, that's how that soul works. And you don't want to just give it up willingly. It's sad. Okay. It's sad. But yeah. So hopefully, you know, this video makes sense. If I messed up or confused you, please let me know down below. Um, like I said, s explaining some of this Sometimes it's very difficult and things might be misinterpreted and hopefully they weren't, especially when it comes to the whole karma thing and the soul lesson plan thing and the soul thing. I'm trying my best to interpret interpret the messages my guides have given me. But yeah, this one was a semi-long video actually. But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for, you know, if you've stuck to the end, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see y'all soon. Peace out, home slices.